Japanese-American internment camp survivor and civil rights icon Fred Kermitz who is being celebrated with a Google Doodle on what would have been his 98th birthday. Fred Kermitz who can be remembered fighting for civil rights and against prejudice throughout his life, Google says. The doodle by artist Sophie Diao herself a child of Asian immigrants features a patriotic portrait of Kermitz who wearing his Presidential Medal of Freedom, a scene of the internment camps to his back, surrounded by cherry blossoms flowers that have come to be symbols of peace and friendship between the U.S. and Japan. Not long before his death in 2005, Kermitsu spoke out about how some have used Japanese internment as a justification for profiling against Muslims in the fight against terrorism. One, Kermitz who was born in Oakland and was not able to find a job after high school because he was Japanese. Toyo Saburo Fred Kermitz who was born January 30, 1919, in Oakland, California, to Katsui Aoki and Kukuzaburo Kermitsu, who had immigrated to the United States in 1905, according to his biography on the Kermitsu Institute's website. They ran a floral nursery in Iwakan. He had three brothers. Kermitsu attended Castlemont High School in Oakland, where he played tennis and was on the swim team. Kermitsu tried to enlist in the military in 1940, but was rejected due to stomach ulcers. He then tried to work at a shipyard and elsewhere to help the war effort, but was fired because he was Japanese. He trained to become a welder, eventually working at the docks in Oakland as a shipyard welder and quickly rising through the ranks to foreman. The Kermitsu Institute says, One day, when he arrived to punch in his time card, Kermitsu found a notice to report to the union office, where he was suddenly fired from his job due to his Japanese ancestry. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, he was unable to obtain a job anywhere. 2. He was arrested in 1942 for trying to dodge internment, leading to a landmark Supreme Court case, Kermitsu vs. the United States. After the Pearl Harbor attack, Kermitsu underwent plastic surgery on his eyes to disguise his Asian features and changed his name on his draft registration card to Clyde Sarah, the New York Times said in his obituary. He also listed his background on the card as Spanish-American. He had an Italian girlfriend at the time and hoped the changes would allow him to avoid racism and internment. Kermitsu was arrested in 1942 after going into hiding rather than surrendering to an internment camp. He was recognized as being Japanese on a San Francisco street corner and taken to jail. After he was arrested, the American Civil Liberties Union's director in Northern California approached him about using his case to test the legality of the internment order, which impacted about 120,000 Japanese Americans. I was stunned. I couldn't believe this was happening in America. Kermitsu said in an article on the ACLU's website, I was surprised when the guard came and told me I had a visitor. I didn't know him, but he introduced himself as Mr. Ernest Bazig of the American Civil Liberties Union. The ACLU provided him with a lawyer. B was convicted of violating a federal order and sentenced to five years of probation. His conviction was appealed by the ACLU and eventually held up in the landmark U.S. Supreme Court case. Kermitsu vs. the United States. The ACLU argued the exclusion and detention laws violated basic constitutional rights, but lost, with the wartime measure being declared constitutional. Justice Hugo Black wrote in a majority opinion that while all legal restrictions which curtail the civil rights of a single racial group are immediately suspect and deserve the most rigid scrutiny, they are not all unconstitutional, he said. Pressing public necessity may sometimes justify the existence of such restrictions, racial antagonism never can. The six justices in the majority sided with the military's argument that some Japanese Americans were not loyal to the United States, but were instead loyal to their ancestral country. The court agreed that separating the disloyal from the loyal was impossible logistically, so the internment order had to apply to all Japanese Americans within the restricted area. The court ruled the security concerns of the nation outweigh the equal rights promised by the Constitution. In his dissent, Justice Robert Jackson said Kermitsu has been convicted of an act not commonly thought a crime. It consists merely of being present in the state whereof he is a citizen, near the place where he was born, and where all his life he has lived. 
Vikramitsu and his family were held at the Central Utah War Relocation Center in Topaz, Utah, until the end of World War II in 1945. I felt I knew I was an American citizen, but with everyone against you, the government against you and no one to help you, I figured it was just a slim chance. Kermitsu told filmmaker Steven Okazaki in 1983. But I was going to see what I could do and see what happens. 3. His conviction was overturned in 1983 and he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1998. In 1976, President Gerald Ford ended Executive Order 9066 which allowed for the internment of Kermitsu and other Japanese Americans, and said, we now know what we should have known then. Not only was that evacuation wrong but Japanese Americans were and are loyal Americans. His conviction was eventually overturned in 1983 and he was finally vindicated, according to PBS. The Civil Liberties Act of 1988 included a formal apology to Kermitsu and the others held in internment camps. A congressional report found the Supreme Court ruling in Kermitsu v. The United States had been overruled in the court of history. But the ruling was never overturned, and still does stand, and some in recent years have feared it could be used against Muslims. The Atlantic's Matt Ford discussed the issue in November 2016 after President Donald Trump's election, pointing to the dissent that stated the case legalized racism. Kermitsu went on to have an even larger impact through his civil rights activism. In 1998, Kermitsu was awarded the nation's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Bill Clinton. In the long history of our country's constant search for justice, some names of ordinary citizens stand for millions of souls. Plessy, Brown, Parks, Clinton said. To that distinguished list, today we add the name of Fred Kermitsu. 4. Kermitsu, who died in 2005, was married and had two children. Kermitsu died of respiratory illness at the age of 86 in California on March 30, 2005, according to the Los Angeles Times. He was survived by his wife of 59 years, Catherine Pearson Kermitsu, along with two children, Karen and Ken. He had a very strong will, his attorney, Dale Minami told the LA Times. He was like our Rosa Parks. He took an unpopular stand at a critical point in our history. Kermitsu lived in Oakland for most of his life except for some time spent in Detroit, Michigan. After his internment, it was there that he met his future wife, who was a student at Wayne State University. According to the Kermitsu Institute, he struggled with his label as a criminal for most of his life, until his conviction was overturned in 1983. It had a lasting impact on his basic rights, affecting his ability to obtain employment. According to the Kermitsu Institute, he fought for reparations and for the U.S government to admit its wrongdoing. I would like to see the government admit that they were wrong and do something about it so this will never happen again to any American citizen of any race, creed, or color, he told U.S. District Judge Marilyn Patel when his conviction was overturned. Kermitz who continued to fight for civil liberties late in life, trying to prevent Muslims in America from being discriminated against like he and Japanese Americans have been. He filed the Marcus briefs in two post-9-11 cases related to Guantanamo Bay, one in 2003 and one in 2004, warning the government not to repeat the mistakes of Japanese internment. According to Densho, Gurmitsu said right before his death, I'll never forget my government treating me like this. And I really hope that this will never happen to anybody else because of the way they look. If they look like the enemy of our country, urging people to protest, but not with violence, and don't be afraid to speak up, one person can make a difference, even if it takes 40 years. 5. Fred Kermitsu Day is celebrated on his birthday in California and three other states. Kermitsu's legacy is carried on by the Fred T. Kermitsu Institute, which works with teachers and community leaders across the country to promote his fight for justice and civil liberties. And, Fred Kermitsu Day is celebrated in his native state of California on his birthday each year. The day of celebration began in 2010. It is also celebrated in Hawaii. 
Florida, and Virginia. This year's Fred Kermit Day falls during a relevant time for Americans, as people have taken to the streets to protest President Donald Trump's executive order banning refugees and visa holders from seven Muslim-majority countries out of fears they could carry out terror attacks in the name of radical Islam in this country. Protesters flocked to airports around the country and the ACLU, which fought for Kermit has promised a legal challenge to the travel ban. Attorneys have already won temporary battles to allow for some of the barred travelers who were detained in U.S. airports to stay in the country while the constitutionality of Trump's order is heard. In 2015, at a ceremony on Kermit Day, NBC Asian America's Francis Kai Hua Wang spoke about the similarities between Kermit Su's fight and the one facing Muslims in America today. Kermit Su's daughter, Karen, who is the director of the institute that bears her father's name, also recently spoke out about her father's legacy as it pertains to Muslim Americans today. He would be really disgusted that we haven't learned our lessons of history, she said of Trump in an interview with KTVU-TV. What we didn't learn from 1942 from President Roosevelt's executive order is that we cannot racially profile and assume that everyone is guilty just because they are associated with one religion or one ethnic group. It's very scary. It's like 1942 all over again she said. So when people are making statements that totally go against all principles of being an American, then we all need to speak up. Of executive orders, like the immigration order issued by Trump and the one issued by President Franklin D. Roosevelt that led to her father's internment, she said Americans might not understand their power. That does not need to be approved by Congress. That's the power of the executive order she told KQED-TV. So we need to caution people and make them aware that we are in danger of making the same mistakes. Karen Kermitsu told the San Francisco Chronicle she is hopeful people speak up against discriminatory orders. Fortunately, now we have other organizations that are able to speak up, whereas in 1942 there really wasn't anyone, she said. But now that's all changed and we should all work together so that we can change the hearts and minds and stop this racial profiling and this racial discrimination in this country.